Top story tonight is a developing situation coming out of southern Utah. Two people dead and a suspect now in jail after a standoff with police. KSL crews were there with cameras rolling as that suspect surrendered to police in St. George. With the suspect behind bars, questions remain about how all this happened. We do have team coverage on the investigation and how the community is reacting to this brutal act of violence. First News Specialist Alex Cabrero is live in St. George tonight where this night-long incident came to an end. And Alex, this was quite a case that police are now putting together. Yeah, it certainly is, Dini. It is going to take some time to gather all the evidence, collect all the facts, and then put together that final report. But, you know, no matter what detectives determine, none of this is going to make any sense. Now, earlier this morning, 28-year-old Mia Bailey was found in that thick sagebrush back there, that green vegetation right near that gray wall there. This is in St. George, just off of 2800 East and 1000 South. Police convinced Bailey to give up, but it did take a couple of hours of negotiating. This right here is video of when Bailey eventually decided enough was enough, walking out of the brush, hands up, and eventually laying on the ground where police put handcuffs on Bailey and then took Bailey to jail. Bailey is the only suspect in the shooting deaths of two people in Washington City last night. The nearby neighborhood here in St. George was put on a shelter-in-place command as police negotiated with Bailey. The main goal was to keep people safe, police safe, and even Bailey safe. This isn't the end for her, right? We, we want to make sure that, that she knows that and that we're going to treat her the correct way and in a fair way. Make sure, you know, our justice system is followed and that she gets the respect that she needs. Police even got Bailey's gun, which was also found in the brush here in St. George. Again, this all comes from a double shooting last night. Police were called to a house after reports of shots fired. When police went inside, that's when they found two people dead. Neighbors and even family are saying the two people killed are Bailey's parents, though police aren't officially releasing their relationship just yet, and names haven't been released either. P police eventually last night put out a description of Bailey and even Bailey's car. It was that description which people, someone in this neighborhood, saw and contacted police. That's when all this took place right back here. Right now, Bailey is in the Washington County Jail. We will have coverage of this case as it continues forward. In St. George, Alex Cabrero, KSL 5 News. Yeah, tense moments uh, throughout the day and the overnight hours. So glad it's come to a close there. Alex, thank you. This act of violence has rattled a community with neighbors reacting to the violence. New specialist Kara Bracken continues her team coverage tonight with their stories. Kara? Hey, well, police, they do say that there are multiple people that were inside of this home when the shooting happened. And they are saying that uh, there were not just anybody who they were had been shot, but rather the parents of the shooter, shooter suspect. Sirens and um, a lot of uh, vehicles racing around. Last night, a growing tense scene. It, there was already um, volatility and, and bad vibes going with within the family. Neighbors say a mom, dad, brother, and his wife all lived in the home. Only the last months are we told Bailey used to live there too, but in the last several months moved out. The story all sounds the same from neighbors describing conflicting views of gender expression within the family. Just down the street, Richard Ziscovici was home when the shooting happened. He says things escalated again as Bailey's brother and his wife were also home when the shooting happened and had to run for their own lives. They escaped and uh, were in my neighbor's basement um, to get away from. Seven miles away, Bailey was apprehended. Neighbors there also impacted. A lot of the residents are, are nervous. They're a little bit frightened. They're scared, um, rightfully so. Now, police tell us the medical examiner was here last night. Now, as for why they're still here, they've been here for several hours since yesterday. They are still working on getting all of that uh, data, that information, and then processing that evidence. Guys, I'll send it back to you. Yeah, pretty unnerving for all those residents there. All right, Kara, thank you. Stay with KSL as we continue tracking the latest developments in this double murder case. We're going to carry updates on our air, on our website, ksltv.com, and you can get alerts on your mobile device with our free KSL Plus app.